So, I finally checked out the premiere episode that aired yesterday, actually, of Motherland Fort Salem. And I have one thing to say. Live action strike witches. Like, seriously. Hi guys, my name is Maria Park, and this is Approach to Nerd. And in this episode, we are reviewing episode one, the premiere episode of the freeform show Motherland Fort Salem. And the episode is called Say the Words. Um, yeah, this was a really cool introduction to the world of the witches, basically. Um, I'm still trying to figure out a little bit on where the plot's going, because right now it was a little bit more about the characters. We didn't get a lot of exposition on, like a lot of exposition on the deal that was made by um, General Sarah Adler. She was a uh, alder. She was the original general that made the the accord with the US government where basically stating that all witches, instead of being persecuted, would serve the government by fighting their wars in the army. Um, we do know that happens. Um, we see you know, pictures of her, so she's like extremely old, <laughs> but she does. She looks like she hasn't aged in years. I'm sure magic's you know, making that happen. Um, but yeah, so we don't have a lot of exhibition on the past. I'm sure we'll get lots of flashbacks later on, but this is the pilot premiere, whatever. So. Yeah, they they basically kind of just jumped right into the story. So it follows the three main characters who are assigned to a unit. So basically they have to work together and they all have to work together because if they don't, if one member of the group fails, the entire group fails. So they will never go into war college and get out of basic if they don't work as a team. And that is easier said than done with these three main characters because we have um, Rael, who is the rebel, who really doesn't give a crap about the army. And she just lost her mother the previous year because her mother was also a soldier or a medic. She comes from a long line of medics and she lost her mother um, on her last mission. So she's angry. And so now that she's had to be conscripted, I guess that they call it conscription when you get um, the calling to go to the military and you say the words and like you, after you say the words where you swear allegiance, you get a coin with your name on it that just appears out of the fire in the air. You know, it's magic. Um, <laughs> I'm sure that's what my dad felt when he went to the, the Air Force, but probably not. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, Rael is the, she's basically like, I'm following my own rules. I don't give a crap. I am a rebel. I'm angry, blah, blah, blah. So she's the angry rebel of the group. Then you have, um, I guess I'm gonna call her a lifer. Like Abigail Bellwether comes from a long line of Bellwethers where her very first ancestor who was a slave was probably the first soldier that Adler got or Alder got in the military during the Accords. So there's they're like an elite family in the military and her mother, Petra, just happens to be um, Rael's mother's commanding officer. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff that we learned in the episode about that. Um, we learned that Rael, um, she got these letters from her dad that her mother had written, where her mother talks about how Petra, Abigail's mother, um, was sending them off into dangerous missions and not really caring about them, and you know, she's getting us killed and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, Rael and Abigail have a very turbulent relationship. Um, they all, I guess Rael sees, you know, Abigail already is kind of stuck up and entitled and, you know, just going to wing your way through army because you're your family. And Abigail sees Rael as a waste of space, basically. Um, and so I think they're going to be best friends. It's just how it works. It is how it works in these series. Um, but yeah, so we have all that drama with them. And then we have the third member whose name is Tally. And Tally is from, she calls it a matrifocal a matrifocal allotment, which is a society that has no men. It's complete. It's all women, women dominated, midwives, doctors, whatever, every career, all women. So she's never been with a guy. I don't know if that's how a lot of the society is, but Abigail seemed to be taken aback by it because I think Abigail's family is, spends most of their time in New York. And um, if I remember, Abigail is, I mean, um, Rael is from a very small town called Chippeway. North Carolina. 
Um, I, love, I don't know if it's a town, but Chippewa, North Carolina. And so she's more like the poorer side. Abigail's more of the rich side. And it kind of seems like Tally's kind of in the middle. And what's interesting about Tally's character is she didn't have to join the army. Her mother, um, being that her mother lost her older two sisters, and I guess she was the only other child, she got out of having to serve in the military. Um, and then she reopened the case probably when Tally was young and made it so her daughter didn't have to do it either. So Tally, seeing all the stuff that was going along with, um, with the terrorist group that are what they're doing basically called the spree, joins because she didn't want to see innocent people get hurt. So she's the, probably the only voluntary recruitment in all of this you know, series. She, she went willingly, even though um, there's a good chance she may not come back and she's basically owned by the government for life. Um, so I like Tally a lot. Tally is the, she's the mediator between Raoul and Abigail. Um, and, and I don't know, I'm kind of liking how this is going so far. But what's interesting also is that the three of them seem to have some kind of, let me see how I can say this. Like, so we know that Abigail is from a very, you know, well-established elite family and she's a prodigy witch. And their witchcraft is not, I mean, they have spells, but they use a lot of their voices to do things. It's almost like a banshee. Um, so they have like sound attacks and like they have this thing called choral sequencing where they can all harmonize together to do like something major, like a spell or whatever. And like they conjure storms like tornadoes, you know, storm and fury. And these three, Rael, Abigail, and Tally, for some reason, they resonate and harmonize perfectly to the point where it seems like they are like the elite, their, their group is the elite among everyone else. Um, that's how it looks. I mean, like I said, I was going by what happened in the first episode, but once they really start to get their crap together near the end and start, you know, basically acting as one unit, yeah, they're very powerful. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see where that goes. Um, now, outside of the three, there is the terrorist group called the Spree. And the Spree are basically an anti-militant group that hates the military. They feel like witches are being enslaved. But the way they're protesting is by mass murders of innocent people. So in the very beginning of this episode, they have conscription day and there's like a big like outdoor party or whatever. And you see this woman with a balloon and she's chanting something and then the balloon starts getting bigger and bigger and pops and then people just start willingly walking up the stairs of these buildings and leaping to their deaths and like i think there was a death toll of 1600 people in this event and as she's walking by as they're all bodies are dropping she's like we are the spree and so the spree are the terrorist group that they are mainly fighting um interestingly enough there's a character that gets introduced named skyla Skyla introduces herself as a, a necro, meaning she's a witch that works with the dead and apparently can't be around the general public. I don't know what that's about. I don't know the different classes yet or whatever. We're still early on. But, um, but yeah, she turns out to be a spree. And she turns out to be the same spree that we see that caused all the deaths in the Conscription Day attack. Um, she uses, like, fire to change her appearance. But she actually looks like crazy she has she has like flaming red hair crazy eyes crazy face she looks nuts and at one point she's looking in the mirror using her true face and she sees the balloon that we saw her use to cast the spell at the beginning of this episode so skyla is spree and she uh, masquerades as another girl pretty girl with dark hair named skyla who is seducing rael and it's working and rael is just like really into her and so Skyla is the one that convinces Rael to stop trying to get herself expelled and put to the front line, you know, where you're just basically going to be dead in probably a few days and start playing the game and letting them train her. And, you know, she basically says the way out is, is under and in. So she convinces her of that. And I'm really hoping that does not mean that Rael is going to end up, or Rael is going to end up being a spree herself. Because in the next tra the trailer we saw for episode two, it looked like she was, from the back, it was her hair. Now, that could be the girl, Skyla, or whatever her real name is. That could be her just masquerading as her, because if she can make herself look like anything, then she probably is pretending to be real, and she may be causing a lot of problems in the next episode. Who knows? But as it stands, um, Skyla and Rael are a, not really a couple, but they are messing around, and Skyla is spree. 
And basically, Rael does not know that. Um, something, though, that is interesting, they have this drill sergeant, and her name is, I know her last name is Quartermain, um, Ancosta or something like that. She is very suspicious to me. I feel like she's either in with the spree or she knows that Skyla is you know, spree and maybe she's just not doing anything about it because maybe she's unhappy. I don't know. But it's just how she interacts with everyone, how she made a point of telling Tally that Abigail wanted to ask General you know, Alder for reassignment because she didn't want to work with Rael. You know, why would a drill sergeant give you that information? You know, I grew up on bases, you know, around the world my, almost my entire life because my dad was military. And I know that drill sergeants don't just give information to, you know, <laughs> any rookies that are there. I mean, that's, that's really, really weird. So it sounds like she's instigating stuff. Just like, um, you know, her looking at um, Skyal when they were, they were like, a, Skyla, sorry, when they were in the infirmary, um, she kind of was doing something to Skyla and she's like, I got my eye on you. And she says, stay away from, you know, rail, you know, like your life depended on it. It's like, <laughs> I don't know. It's just weird. She implies that everybody there knows everything, meaning you can't get away with anything. So if that's true, then I don't know how they don't know that Skyla is free. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Something about Aunt Costa, the drill sergeant, uh, um, Quartermain is very suspicious to me. Um, but yeah, overall though, I mean, there were, there were a lot of things in this episode. I'm, I'm still trying to get, you know, I call it the lay of the land of this plot because it, there is a lot going on. I mean, there's so many side stories like with different characters, like Abigail trying to appease her mother and not fail the family, you know, Tally voluntarily leaving her mother and her, you know, basically saying she destroyed her mother's life when she left. Um, but she still felt the need to go and Rael just being overall angry. She's angry because her mother is dead and it was the army that killed her and she feels like it takes everything from her and she's probably just going to end up a medic like her mother anyway and die on the front lines or in battle. So what's the point? And yeah, there's so many things that are going on that the bigger picture with the spree that it's not really a huge focus right now. It's more of how do we get these girls to work together so that we can get to the big master plan of the spree. Um, it was pointed out that the spree don't have one leader. They're just disjointed. So I don't know who sent Skyla here or was it just her? I, I don't know. I don't know what is going on. I think it would be insane if we find out later on in this series, especially season one, that General Sarah Alder herself, who made the accord, is the one who founded Spree. That would be crazy. So I know her original plan was to start that army to locate other witches, to form a sisterhood of witches. It wasn't anything to do with the government. That was all a survival tactic. So it wasn't that she was loyal to the U.S. government and we're going to fight the wars and protect the United States before we're even the United States. No, she was looking for her other witch sisters, basically. So she's found a bunch of them now. So now what is your end game? You are accomplishing your goal. You found your witches. What do you do now? My theory is, and this is just a theory, if you want out of the military and you want out of that life, you create an anti-military group that causes a bunch of crap that eventually takes the organization down. So General Sarah Alder being ahead of that, being the actual leader of Spree, I think that would be really cool. I don't know if that's where they're gonna go, but I think that would be really cool. But again, who knows? But regardless, Drill Sergeant Quartermain, really, really shady. <laughs> so yeah. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I'm going to talk about for this episode. I know there's a lot of stuff that did happen in this. There's a lot of fights. There's um, there's some kind of drug uses called the Salva that allows you to like rotate in the air. And apparently it can kill you. Um, that Rael gets from Skyla. Um, that's how they got in the infirmary. You know, there was a lot of stuff about like all of the attacks in general, just the sound attacks, the training, um, the war college itself, the older cadets, you know, all of this stuff is fascinating. But right Right now, the main purpose of the first episode, in my opinion, was to get to know the characters, especially the three girls, and to see how Rael, Abigail, and Tally are going to work together. 
Um, and then here's my other little thought before I end this review. I kind of ship Rail and Tally, and I don't normally ship people, but I keep thinking if, if Rail had to get with anybody, it should have been Tally, because Tally's like the most supportive person for her in, in all of this. You know, we know Skyla's there under shady purposes, and who knows, maybe she actually does like her, but it's not, that she's not really Skyla, she's the redheaded chick, so and she's scary. <laughs> and when she looks in the mirror, she sees herself as a balloon. That's just freaky. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I think that Rael and, and Tally would make a cool, you know, couple. But that's just me. But yeah, I dug it. I'm going to check out season two and I'll probably, or season two, episode two, and I'll probably do a review for that too. But I want to know what you guys think. So leave me a comment below and let me know. And if you would like to sign up for jury duty, hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to know who's next on the nerd bell, hit the notification bell. Until next time, I can't wait for you to approach the nerd. Bye guys. Thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate it, but hey, the party doesn't have to stop now. Click on one of these videos and keep it going.